Hey guys and welcome back to episode 2 now of season 2 of the Grimsby Town to Glory FIFA 21 career mode and as you can see we have a large month ahead of us, smash the like if you're excited for this one. As I've started on this menu, just because I wanted to show you the month we have in store. We have Mansfield first, not going to be playing them this time round because of course we've played them twice last year, even though they are top of the leagues, I'll show you in a minute. Then we have the Carabao Cup first round, we're going to go further in this, but we've got Swindon, who could be a challenge now in our league. We've got uh, Plymouth, who I think I'm going to play as well. As Ipswich, who we're going to end the episode with, or maybe we simulate Crawley as well, as we're going to split it into two halves. Of course, I'd probably play a month if it was just a month, but we have the transfer window. So, before we start, though, we are going to go with the press conference. These comments are from the finale of last season, not last episode. I know it's confusing. I apologise. If you want me to scrap it, I'll scrap it. If you want me to keep going... I will keep going. So the first comment is from Nana, a regular on the channel, saying finale fire. Next season, we re need real improvements on the bench. Going to suggest a new centre-back. And Daniel Ballard, look at him. So I am going to look at him today. I don't know who he is, but he can't hurt to look. Jude Walters, another regular, is saying sign Lee Buchanan. Now, I have signed this guy on my Crystal Palace crew mode. With Boateng coming in the last episode, I know it's hard to kind of predict what other people are going to comment a video in advance but unfortunately I don't think I really can go for him unless it's a loan deal which I might try and of course if Doig goes then it would be a good replacement and finally it's Cole back again with scout one player and look at the potential if it's lower than 80 release them and keep doing that like I said in the last episode I do want to do a academy like full team so I want to get a player in each position regardless of the rating but then again once we improve the scouts, which I hope to do with the leftover money, we will start then scrapping players, which I think is the right thing to do, and maybe go to that philosophy. So that is the press conference out of the way. We've got his media duties done as it's down to football, and a bit more media because, of course, players signing and everything will always be in the media as the shortlist hasn't really changed. I finished last episode saying I want a bit more quality, and these two players are the ones I'm really looking at. Josh McEachern and J-Rock Grott be a good international striker but we've got a couple more new names we've got Connor Wickham, John Jules and Muswake um, or Musque look like good loan strikers Epia I think he's been released from Leicester might be a good one as well we've got a lot of strikers on the list my thinking behind that is because of um, Jackson Jr didn't really have the best first game yes he scored 20 goals last year but do we need someone at this level is he past this level I don't know Gibson He's always going to be like a third choice or fourth choice. And Lafferty's only going down. So yeah, that's my uh, thought process. But we could maybe go out and uh, try and sign a strike from another team. We haven't spent money this year. And that's something we do have a lot of compared to last. I think that's something we've got to do as we have a scout report. But most importantly, Pogon. Uh, I'm not going to pronounce the full thing. It's a Polish team, I think. Want Crookshank on loan. Of course, I'm going to delegate this. And I'm going to put a short-term loan on him. Hopefully, they'll take a short-term because he's 59 rated. I think if he just goes for about six months, he could come back and be maybe a, a substitute left winger. He'd be in the 60 rated, I think, with a bit of experience. And that's what we want. Also, need him back for what the board wants. Of course, they want a player to grow into the first team. As it's another loan offer, this time from Cluj for Luke Spokes. I mean, he's going into Romania a little unrealistic, but this guy I want to get out on loan as well. He is now on the list. And also, if you've got any audio troubles this video, I know the audio should be a little bit quieter. I'm trying new editing technique, trying to get rid of the little buzz that goes on. So hopefully it removes it. As yes, Mansfield, top of the league, like I said at the start. Haven't shown you the league table, but I'll show you after this game, which hopefully we can get a result in. So we've got James McEwen in the goal. Hendry now 70 or 67 rated, getting ahead of myself there. Pollock. Nightingale and Doig in the defence with Harry Clifton, Hewitt and Hartigan in the midfield. Very strong midfield. I think we've got the club now with Wright, Jackson Jr. and Josh Martin who had that exceptional debut on the left. So hopefully he carries on his form which he has picked up a lot since he's come back off loan. These have got a really good team. They haven't got Maynard in it though which actually hypes me up a bit. Can we get the win against Mansfield who we haven't beaten yet in League 2? We don't. It's a defeat at home. Kazuke with the goal and our rivals, who have always been our rivals, beating us once again. I think they may be a bigger rivals than Crawley. Now the amount of times they've beat us as Crookshank has agreed his loan to go to um, Pogon second. Is it one year? 
Okay, so the one, uh, one year, not a short term. I'll accept it anyway. I'll definitely accept that, get him out. And that means we'll have to do something else with the academy boys that are here. That Matt Millen and Mitchell, the uh, Chuckle Brother duo, the names to go. And we've got one straight away. Cluj want spokes. I'll accept that. And here we go. Mitchell, loan to buy. I mean, every single thing's a loan to buy. We'll take a short term, please. And I think before this next game, where are we? In the league table. I don't think it's going to according to plan. They want us to fight for promotion. Don't expect it straight away. Would like it straight away, of course. Who wouldn't like it? What am I on about? As we should be low down. Yeah, just above that relegation zone. But then again, I mean, Barnes is struggling. Uh, Burton, Wickham have only got two draws. And Hull, the rivals, have only got one win. They lost the first game. So oh, that makes me feel a bit better. But then again, we still are on the way down. So I think we need to make a sign in before the Swindon game. Probably not playing in the Swindon game. But there is one man I want to do the job. Josh McEachran, an English player. is injury prone. He wants a high wage. But he's definitely, definitely championship quality. Like Jamie Murphy, like Josh Martin, I think, at the moment. And, of course, Doig, our left back. Need to get him in. And, of course, he wants a crucial. They're recommending a wage which is very high there. Two years for Josh McEachran. I mean, we've got a very strong midfield at the moment, but this will just add quality when Danny Rose retires, I think. So he is a long term. And that is a very, 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 very good wage thing. Only 3 million, or not 3 million, 3k at that 25 goals for a bonus. I mean, if he scores 25 goals, I'll be over the moon. Don't expect that. So I'll give him that. Josh McEachran signs for town. That is a very good signing. That is so much easier than I thought it would be as well. So we've got another championship quality player. I thought he'd get snapped up from a championship club, but of course not. I don't know why he's come to us in the grand scheme of things as well, because we are struggling, of course, in the league. But... He's decided to come across, but unfortunately he isn't going to be in the plans for this first game in the Carabao Cup. It is a bit of a rotational side, but still again, I think he should get the result over the line with McEwen in goal. Millen, the new right back, getting his first appearance. Same with Taylor, same with Darnell Johnson, who's got experience in this league right now from Wigan days. Doig, Tunnicliffe in the midfield for his first start in a town shirt. Clifton and Hewitt with Scannell coming on the right wing. He's got a lot to prove to stay here. Lafferty up front, who's decreasing as well. And Jamie Murphy on the wing for Josh Martin. Yes, it's rotated, but it's still strong, I think, and should get the result over the line. In this game, we are going to play against Swindon Town. And it's going to be Fryer in the net with Giamanetti. Odibayo, Broadbent and Grounds at the back with Jordan Linton, Matt Palmer, who's a decent player. Who are the rest of them? Iadalo, Payne and Jaisimi, an ex Grimsley Town player with hope up front. Yeah, Jaisimi was on loan at Grimsley, didn't get a chance, got it at Swindon, has been an amazing player. But I think he's a rotational player still at Swindon. So that makes me think they've made changes as well as us, which boosts my confidence a bit. And come on, you mighty Mariners, get straight into this. Swindon team. Don't give them a minute to breathe as we really desperately need a win. Haven't had one in absolutely ages as it's Linden on the ball though. He's got a bit of a gap here. Need to come across as Harry Clifton to try and put him off. Great tackle from Harry in the middle as well as Murphy's being took down and sat on. Oh and that does not look good for Jamie Murphy. Straight away our new highest rated player at the club. Uh, I think level with McEachran, or might be higher, is already down as they're playing on Matt Palmer in the middle to Hope. This is a really bad start if it starts like this, but it is wide. And Max Rice already going to have to come on for Murphy, who's injured. Look at that. Hands on the head. He's got his first start when Martin did well. At least we've got Martin now, but that's not a good sign. And now we've got to rethink things. However, Max Rice shouldn't be that bad. Scored in the game at Fleetwood. The first game as oh, he puts a delicious ball across the box. No one there to tap it in and capitalise on it though. So we're going to throw it to Scannell. Really good start from Max Wright. Maybe should have started as oh, Lafferty. As it is Dillian Jaisimi on the ball again. It's a great cut inside. And it's the ex Grimsby Town man who scores against us. Jaisimi at the Swindon fans with the... Um, very late response, celebrating. It's not the way we intended this match to go. Oh, we always start very slow in seasons. Does it require a, a formation change this year, or is it just bad form? I think it might be. We were very lucky to get up last season with the amount of defeats we took as well. And I do see us getting less wins this year and more defeats. But hopefully this, the way it's going, is not a sign of things to come. However, the move is still not over. It's pain. It's a bad tackle, which will inflict pain on him. And it's Darnell Johnson, going to get a yellow card. I mean, 
He's probably not going to be a start for us. Don't be another Tom Holmes. He hasn't had the best of debuts so far, but there's still his time to go. Jaisimi with a layoff to Palmer. Blast it out of our defence. And that is half time. Like the Fleetwood game that we played last episode, it's been all the ball to the opposition. We have not done well indeed, as Fleetwood are beating Burton. Maybe that gives me faith I can beat them when it comes around to it, but not a good game here at all. Kyle Lafferty, you have not impressed me so far. So Jackson Jr. is going to have to be put out there a bit. Sean Scannell as well hasn't done well, so I might as well play Crookshank. Put Max Wright on his uh, favoured wing as we make two changes at the break. Actually, all the changes now, because of course... Max Wright had to come on. It's a free kick for Swindon Town. Pain over it again. Please, Darnell Johnson. Nidalio with the ball. This Miller guy, he asked for an important role when he came. And he's actually proven that he should have one. But not you, whoever that was. Is it May? I think it's May on his debut. The defender we signed on a pre-contract from Aberdeen has given a penalty away to uh, put more pressure on him and the team, of course, as... Don't know who's stepping over it. It's going to be Jaisimi for a brace against his old club. And he's got it. The Carabao Cup is just not our competition. Penalty. Let's watch it again. Nothing really to say. It's a penalty. And it's just when he sent the keeper the wrong way with. Now Jackson Jr. Jr. with the ball through. That's a good ball, you know. And Ryan Tunnicliffe gets his first town goal straight after the Swindon one. We have a reply. I'm going to let him celebrate as well because, of course... It's his first start for town. He was the other pre-contract arrival who, of course, is doing better than May now as he gets a goal on his full debut. Great touch, great finish in that corner and the game is probably back on. I think that was an absolute great goal as don't let Jai see me do something again. It's Taylor who's messed up on it with a bad touch backwards. But we're going to try and get out of his area. It's now Tunnicliffe or Crookshank, should I say, on to Jackson Jr. It's just Tunnicliffe's. Fully involved in this game. And don't let them kill the game off here, please, boys. Just under 20 minutes. I would take this to extra time if I can. But I think it goes straight to penalties, which we haven't had on this save yet. As it's going to be pain on the ball again. Makes Taylor trip up. Pulls his pants absolutely down as McEwen is relied upon. Great save from McEwen. He's really raising his game when we've got promoted this season. As it's going to be um, Crookshank at the front post. Please get this way. He's number seven. As Darnell Johnson, please. Yes, good header. Come on, boys. We can still get something out of this. This is a, a big gap for Max Wright to run into. A bit of a, a step there, a bridge. As Jackson Jr. with the ball over the top to Crookshank. Oh, bad touch from the youth player. And it's Ryan Tunnicliffe still battling on on this wing. He's got Crookshank inside of him. Crookshank, what can you do here? Great cut inside. Oh, but he can't find Ju uh, Jackson Jr. But he's got the ball back. Tunnicliffe. Oh, Crookshank. I keep saying the... Got the same name, and that is an absolutely woeful boy. You can see why he needs to go out on loan for his crossing to improve. And all his stats as Jaisimi is tucked down there. The ball is going to keep on going, though. If we get this out, we're going to still give us time. Can we get down the other side of the field? Get that down the wing to Max Wright. He's lost it. And that is going to be game over, I think. It is another Carabao Cup. First round upset for us as Swindon Town squeezed through. It was a good renaissance. Definitely better than the... Um, Late in Orient game last season, but still not to be in this competition. I guess the Papa John's is the one we go for. Matter of fact, it was one shot from us and one goal. So I guess there's positives there. Clinicality, which we're going to need more of in this league, definitely. As we're going to try and make signings now. Idahan's upset that he didn't get the chance. Mate, I want you to go out on loan and not play here. As Murphy's only going to be out six days. It's a quad injury, so he couldn't play on. But of course, he's not going to be out too long. I think it said something about um, Crookshank going out on loan now. So that is his departing performance. As it's time to go for the free agents again, I think. We've got loads to go for. Nick Powell, look at that. 72 rated. But it says he isn't willing to move to a, a league down below. I think the next one I'm going to go for, though, is Schofield. The backup keep will take a wage of 1k. He is released from Huddersfield. Looks good. Looks 62 rated. Still potential to grow as well. But I think he's a good backup one. And is he going to take this backup role? Sporadic. I think he might want rotational. Yeah, rotational. Okay, that's fine. It's completely fine. He can play in the Papa John's trophy. I think he's good enough. So he wants a four-year contract. Wants to pin his future down. We'll accept that. Release clause. We don't want a release clause as well as the wage 1k. Perfect. Clean sheets and signing on bonus. Ryan Schofield is the backup to replace Oli Battersby, who's now out on loan. And also, I think it's time we pull the plug on a strike. We've got all these reports back as well. Marvin Johnson looks good, but a high wage. Danny Rowe is not going to be the next striker we go for. It's this guy. You might have just seen him a moment ago. 
Chris Long, he got released from Motherwell. He wants a high wage. I mean, he's a decent striker, 26 in his prime, 66 rated, the highest of course, he would be in the squad. I think is a great, great addition. Looks like a bit of a Grimsby player as well. It's important. You don't even want crucial. I'll accept that. Three years on Chris Long. I will accept that as well. I was thinking about a lone striker as well, but I don't know if that's going to be the uh, realistic thing at the moment. As they're leaving the wage up to me, this is going to be difficult. I will offer him four and a half K. Don't want to leave him hanging with a 10K bonus. Please take that, Chrissy Long. It's a bit of a decrease, and he does take it. It's the highest paid player at the club now, but we have ourselves a striker. And with you guys mentioning him, and of course in the press conference, I actually didn't even know. I'd already scouted Danny Ballard. He is from Arsenal. We're going to try and get him on loan. 21, 61 rated. I think if we get Idah now, this guy is going to be a good fourth choice. So yeah, he might not play much. He might come off the bench a bit, but I think he'd be a good addition. So we will go for a loan. We'll go for a one-year loan. It depends on the wage that Arteta wants us to pay, though. 3K for him is something I am not willing to do. It's got to be 35%. If it's not, I don't think I'm going to pay 3K for him. So, I'm sorry. I don't think I'm willing to pay it. No, Arteta stormed out as well. It's just too much for a fourth choice. So, yeah, I wouldn't have minded him coming into the club, but he's not going to. As the next game is Plymouth Argyle. I'm going to play this one because we need to get his league uh, form up and running. It's actually getting really hard to pick the team now. I love it. I love that competition as we've got a full bench now. Good players on the bench because the team is McEwen in the goal. Hendry, Pollock, Nightingale and Doig. I think that's the best defence, although still is improving. Didn't do it in League 2. Might not do it in League 1 with Clifton sitting in CDM. McEachran's going to probably have to come off the bench and push our uh, Grimsby Town youth through and through player out of the team with Hewitt there as well. He's positions up for grabs. And Tunnicliffe, of course, he's staying in because of that goal and great performance from him. Uh, outshadowing Hartigan with Wright, Jackson Jr. and Martin, of course. But Long, Lafferty and Scannell now all on the bench, really fighting for their positions. Love the competition. And we are against the Green Army with Cooper in the net. Edwards, Wotton, Tomlinson and Kamara at the back with Cooper, Dom Telford and Danny Mayer. Great players. McLeod, Moore and Jeff Court, who, of course, were brought by Wright. Ryan Lowe, who is now manager. Wotton's a great defender. Five at the back. It's a game that we want to get back on form with, but one that's going to be hard to do. And we do actually start with the ball. Come on. The boys want to be on the front foot. Jackson Jr., you've now got your position to nail down. I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt, but you've still got to do it with a striker behind you in Chris Long. But he does not want Chris Long to play because Jackson Jr., five minutes into this game, has put us in front against Plymouth Argyle. Can we get our first win of the season? Very early on, but who knows? Yeah, the first time, I think... No, the second time, sorry. We've led in a game, of course, after Fleetwood on the opening day. And to be honest, we lost that Mansfield game. It was a simulated one, but we still haven't been bad. Great finish, but you've got to look at the keeper. I think Tunnicliffe put him off with that jump. And he might have been offside with the jump. It might be a controversial goal, that one. However, it is Plymouth Argyle straight back on the ball. It's a great ball. Luke Hendry tries to take Jeff got out. It's one wood. It looks like a really interesting game this one. I'm laughing. I'm laughing. I've lost. I'm losing now. Oh, I'm drawing. And I'm laughing. But I still feel like this is going to be a very good game. Great finish, that one. Straight from the middle. I tried to just sweep him. Didn't get near Jeff Got, And it's 1-1. One, one. It's a lively one. It's definitely a lively one. As we're going to give that back into Ryan Tunnicliffe. Gets the ball out to Harry Clifton. Round the corner to Maxi Wright. Can we score literally the third highlight? Third goal as Hendry has the ball. Now it's not going to be. And Nightingale. A lot more get up and go at this stadium. Great atmosphere at Plymouth Argyle right now. As Jackson Jr. gets the ball out to Tunnicliffe. I think we've still been the better team though. As Tunnicliffe's got a great run on there. Jackson Jr. for two. He has two. Another one the keeper probably should have saved. But Jackson Jr. Lafferty and Long, you're going to have to wait. And, I mean, Tunnicliffe didn't get the assist for the first goal, but he did jump and put the keeper out of the way. He's definitely got the assist for this one. Great ball into him. He's been the man of the, the hour as well as Jackson Juniors. You've got to look at the keeper again, though. 2-1 to us. And it's Doige running down the line again. Releases Martin. Can he get involved in this game? It's a ball into Jackson Jr. again. It's a great touch, and it's a first-time hat-trick. A first-half hat-trick. For Jackson Jr., this guy has improved leaps and bounds since Chris Long was literally just signed. What is happening here? Josh Martin again with a brilliant bit of play. He's improved this season. Can't blame the keeper for that one. Got to blame the defence as we are 
thrash in Plymouth. And it's McLeod into Dom Telford, just the end of the first half. And there we go, Danny Mayer's touch ends the half. It's been an absolute great half as well of football. Absolute domination over Plymouth Argyle, who's a bit of a grudge match against Grimsby usually, and it's proved to be, but we've got on top. I'm going to make one change, though. Harry Clifton looks tired, has the uh, orange diamond. So Josh McEachran makes his debut. I'm sorry, Long. You're going to have to wait, though, and Schofield, of course, as McEachran makes his way onto the field. Should I have made that change? I don't know, with the uh, lead being it as it is. Probably should have kept the team the same, but we make changes when we're winning. That's how we roll this season. And it's Jackson Jr. again on a hat trick. Great ball through to Max Wright. I don't know how he's got that. I don't know how my voice just breaks. Max Wright! Oh, Cooper actually saved something for once, as it's Max Wright who's denied his second of the season. And the atmosphere has dulled down again now. It's gone a bit aggressive as... They just try skills in the defence and everything. They've been poor today, Plymouth. And I don't see any more goals in this second half, really. As that's a bad tackle on Moore. Still keeps on going. Gives it to Telford. Gives it to Jeffcott. Another... Ref, come on. That's a good tackle from Matty Pollock. This guy's so unlucky. Every time he sticks his foot in, it's given us a foul. Need to see a replay. Ref, show me that this is a foul. Nah, not a foul. Not a foul. He's got that one wrong, I'm afraid. Definitely, if we were losing, of course, I'd be furious with that, but we're not losing it. It's injured Moore as well, who's gone off. Hendry's going to, or Hewitt, sorry, is going to come off for a hard going to stay down the middle. It's put in the bottom corner. Second penalty in two games put against us. Not even going to bother showing that. Come on, it's 3-2, boys. See out the win. And Noble now, Frank Noble. I've took Tunnicliffe off as well, which is our big brute in the midfield who likes to get a tackle in, which may be a bit of a risk now. All the changes in the centre of the park. As Hartigan's got it now. I have put Jackson Jr. as well in the midfield. Because I want to put Long on for a bit of time. And I can't take Jackson Jr. off with the form he's on. Same with this guy. Max Wright's on flames. As it's a good ball to a ton of cliff before he goes off. And it is a great save from Cooper to stop us rounding it out. Of course, now he's off. He was still on the field. Can we get a debut goal for Long as well? As he's won the header and surely pushed over. Nothing given as always. As Noble... Heads it back to Telford. Boys, come on, Doig. You especially, you should not be slacking off. Referee, blow your whistle. He's gone backwards. There we go. It's the first win of our League One campaign. We will not be in that relegation zone. There's four places in that, so we need to be careful still. It's a big win. It's a hat-trick for Jackson Jr. Gonna stay grounded, as that's a great, great win. Confidence flowing like a waterfall. Now, speaking of Luke Waterfall, I saw you were a free agent when I was scouting earlier on. But that should take us up to 10th, so it is a bit of a jump, that. Jeez. I think, I think it's time to spend on another Youth Academy player. Of course, not on the uh, actual players. They're all free agents. It's easy. As we've only just got this guy in, Jordan Francesco. This guy's in England, Smith. We've had you for the longest, mate. But it's time for you to leave. So he's in transit. I've got to wait until he gets back. But I'm going to splash the cash on a scout as the next game. It's actually a big one as well. We play Ipswich. I think some more uh, teams had played before as Macmillan. He's now going out on loan. Mitchell went for two years as well. So it's going to be a while without him. But hopefully he grows. You don't get to see the rating as well before the comeback. Which I actually... I rate EA for doing that. It's a good feature. And the scout that we're going to get out after we fire this guy for 9k. Sorry, mate is I, I think I'm ready to spend my first million. Rody Green looks like the best one, or do we go for Underwood? Nah, we've got the money. Rody Green, which we don't need to make profit this year. We can make it in two years. So splash the cash, a million pounds on this guy. So he better be a good scout, sending him to England for three months because it's very expensive, this one. Hopefully he gets some blinders for us. And speaking of uh, very good things, the team is not... Looking very good on morale at the moment, but at least Murphy's back on the bench. It's a very strong bench now, indeed. We're going to play the team, of course, who won. It's only fair. But then again, loads of players are, are noshing out the bit to try and get back into the team. So McEwen's in goal. Hendry Pollock, who's upset for some reason. Nightingale and Doig, the best defence right there. With McEachern and Hewitt and Tunnicliffe in the middle. Hartigan and Clifton have got to fight now. Because McEachern came off the bench and was very good. Right, Jackson Jr. and Martin, but of course... A lot of players chewing at the bit for that. We've got Lafferty, we've got Murphy, we got Long, and we've got Scannell. And we've even got, just before the game starts, an offer for Matty Pollock in. Oh, and he's 19-year-old, 65 rated. But then again, I, I think he's unhappy because he wants a move. I really do believe that. So Matty Pollock here, 
Might have to go. I really would, of course, want to keep this guy, but money speaks volumes. I'd take an extra million. I think two million is the minimum. And they won't pay that. All right, so it was very stingy of them. I think that was a bad offer for Pollock. Two million at least. And here we are playing who, in my opinion, are the biggest team in the league with Holly. Vincent Young, Nasiala, Hawkins and Ward at the back, Hughes, Dozzle, John Nolan, Edwards, James, Norwood and Sears. Every single player in there I know and I know they are very decent, so it's going to be a pretty hard one this. At Blundell Park though, so I hope it's possible. And it's definitely the visitors starting off the better. McEwen made to make a save very, very early on as Hewitt's going to get it away. I see Martin as well making a run and it's a poor ball, but we still... Not going to head it on to him. That's what we've got to do this game. Counter-attack, 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 counter-attack. As Jackson Jr. off of a hat-trick. Gives it into Hewitt. Get it over the top again. Oh, it's too far for him. And that's a good run, you know, from Elliot Hewitt. From Jackson Jr. Hewitt, one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. Oh, he's put it wide. I thought he put it in the bottom corner. Big miss, that one. Oh, what a huge miss. As they're straight back. Onto the ball. Being the better team again, like the other couple of games. Though, though Plymouth, we were definitely the better team against them. As Jackson Jr. Can't find a man. Oh, and here comes Nolan again. That's a great tackle from Matty Pollock. Good to see he's got his head still in the game a little bit. Although there are bids coming in for him. I don't want to lose him, but of course... I will lose him if a good club comes in, as that's a good ball to Edwards. Great tackle, Doig. And I am very surprised no bids have come in for that left back. Phenomenal stuff, as Max Wright has it now. Put that over the top to Jackson Jr. Straight on to Martin. Oh, it's sprung off his head. But Martin, still with the ball, gives it in the middle to Jackson Jr. Who's going to cut back and go for a finesse straight to Holly. And yeah, although Ipswich have had more possession, I'd say our style of football is showing the most. Our counter-attacking... Working very good as, yep, that's half-time, nil-nil. Been a bit of a grudge match, like I usually say, because it's the lower divisions. Of course they're going to be grudgy, not clean football like the Prem, which will hopefully be in soon. But we've got to get wins if we're going to be in it soon, and second half, we've got to take us chances. And Ryan Tunnicliffe starting off the second half. Man of the episode, as here comes Martin as well, man of the first one. Tripped a little bit, but it goes through to Tunnicliffe. Ball in the middle to Jackson Jr. Round the corner for Wright to run onto, and he smacks the post. What a shot. What an absolute rocket from Max Wright. However, they've got a bit of a ball through. Doig's on a yellow card. Can't make a big tackle, as it's actually scuffed from Norwood as well. Oh, dear. Oh, and it's another ball through to Norwood, you know. Oh, Pollock. Matty Pollock. I mean, our defence has actually been a lot better this game. Of course, nil-nil so far. I feel like he is a very big reason into why that is. 20 minutes to go here against Ipswich. I think a nil-nil would be a very good result against a good team, a clean sheet. But then again, we want to push on. And Martin, he's spurring us up the field. He's cut inside again. Martin with a shot. Not good enough. And I think I'm going to sub him off. And just before Martin goes off, we are going to get a corner. It's going to be Jamie Murphy. And Long, who gets a longer bit of game time, if you pardon the pun, as he's now on the field. Can he win a header from a corner? Score straight away. It would be good against Ipswich, wouldn't it? As it's going to go back out to Tunnicliffe over the top. That's poor. And it is Ipswich pushing on at the end. Dozzle with a ball in the middle. Great save, McEwen. With three minutes to go, we've deserved this clean sheet. We've dug in deep. And can we get anything more from it? It's Long making a run. It's a long run. He's on the end of the ball. Nisiala on his back, but Long shoots, and it's a save from the keeper. It's turned into a very, very end-to-end -end game at the end. And a very entertaining one at that. Cross into the box from Hartigan, who's just come on. It's going to go back out wide. Still two added minutes. Get everyone up there. As it's not gone into the box. And that is the end of the end-to-end -end bit. Nil-nil with it switched down. Clean sheet. Draw. Deserved. And yeah, it's only what we deserve. That is the moral of the story today. Every single game, the way it's panned out has been the right way in terms of result. We're better than against Plymouth. We won. We were worse on stats than Mansfield. We lost. And of course, we deserve to draw that. And we did, as we are going to end the episode out straight away. Players going out on loan. We're 14th. There's a Hartigan offers in. Oh my dear. I'm going to leave that till next time, though. And I think... That may have to be an accept with the midfielders we've brought in. But I'll leave it up to you guys. And unfortunately, this is the end of the episode right now. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. With the notification bell on as well as we are back into daily uploads now. Uh, daily uploads, sorry. Now nothing's corrupting. And yeah, it's been a long episode this. I apologize for that. And I will see you all in the next one. In a bit. Peace.